More gore! More gore! More gore! Pour on the gore! This just makes me so damn happy. I'm already a huge fan of the Dead Space franchise. I mean, shit, I covered the entire trilogy numerous different times, name dropped it as much as I possibly could here on this channel back whenever it was a new thing. Oh, I've got an Isaac Clark figure sitting right there. And the idea that we're getting a spiritual successor as well as a remake of this, but the Callisto Protocol? Dude, this is going above and beyond, and this is from the creative mind who brought us the IP to begin with. Glenn Schofield went out of his way to go and recapture all the shit that I loved so damn much about one of the best sci-fi horror games of all time. Hell, one of the best new IPs that came out that generation. When that shit was dropping on PS3 and 360, dude, I was all over. I mean, hell, how many of us weren't losing our collective shit at the idea of running around as Isaac Clarke and just delimbing every single thing? I mean, it's just fun. Like, it really is. And getting to watch all the footage that they had from State of Play and from Summer Game Fest, the extended trailer footage, the gameplay footage, all of it, it just brought a big-ass smile to my face. Like, this is the type of shit that I love to see. And there's been numerous different interviews talking in-depth about the development behind this. And to me, that's always fascinating to get a peek behind the curtain to understand all the intricacies and all the work that goes into it. It makes you appreciate all the labor of love that goes into this kind of stuff. Despite the fact that we are seeing carnage beyond our wildest dreams unfold on screen. And it's the type of shit, it's like, I just got them talking about the Resident Evil 4 remake and then going straight into this. And I was just like, back to back horror games? No, give me that. I will lap that shit up all day. But we're getting to play as not Isaac Clarke anymore, but in this we are playing as one Jacob Lee who's getting stuffed inside of a prison that's on Jupiter's moon as the title would suggest, and he's trying to go and escape and unearth all the secrets behind why the fuck all this shit's going down, because if you got to notice, all the things that you're fighting are called biophages, which, I mean, it's already terrifying to realize that these were once inmates, some of them are guards, and it's just, they're running amok. And it's one of those things, like, I appreciate body horror in all sorts of horror movies. Like, if you ever got to watch The Beyond or Reanimator or The Void, anything like that, I mean, it's extremely fucked up. Like, I'm into that kind of shit. And to me, it's scary because it's something that's familiar. And that was something that they were talking about with the art direction of this when they were discussing, like, the character designs and the way that they went about it was they went with human body scans and then decided to just do the most fucked up things that they possibly can. So everything that you see, it doesn't seem so otherworldly that you couldn't comprehend it, but it's familiar enough that you're just like, oh dear God, I don't, nope, 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 and you just want to get the fuck out of there. You know, you feel like you're completely alone because you are, and you feel isolated because you are. I mean, you're trapped within the confines of a prison, a maximum security prison, by shit that once you dead beyond explanation. Just wants to go paint the wall with your remains, and it's pretty damn evident from everything that you got to see that's being showcased, it is carnage, and then some, I'm just, oh, give me it, give me it all day. But I like this kind of shit because not only do we get to solve the mystery behind why all this stuff started happening, because clearly, whenever Lee gets there, you know, it looks normal. You get to see the ship coming in, and he's being dropped off, and he's getting his ass waltzed right in, but then all of a sudden, all hell breaks loose. And you get to see all these inmates go from just regular human beings, suddenly they're just fucked up, just ripping everyone apart that's around them, and you're trying to live. You're trying to make sure that not only can you escape with your ass intact, but you need to get the fuck out of there in general because if you don't, I mean, it's just going to be a mausoleum, and you don't want to be any part of that. By the way, mausoleum, that's a good horror movie. Anyhow, seeing some of this, I mean, it's its very obvious in every single capacity when you watch it, you see all sorts of familiar things from Dead Space. I mean, like, for example, they don't have 
that HUD that has shit and information all over the place, clearly wanting to avoid anything like MMOs where it's just like a flood of info. But this has it where your HP is on your back and the amount of ammo that you have is actually strapped to the guns that you're using. I don't know what they call some of the guns, but I know the ones kind of like the gravity gun and the ones a lot like the plasma cutter. And he also had some melee weapons that we got to see being used. But having that on there, it means that you're more enveloped in the world. You don't have all this shit that's kind of taking you out of the moment and taking you out of the world. So you just get to focus on everything else around you in the environment. I like that a lot. I mean, I, I got to see that they were making this uh, this really big deal talking about the lighting, and that's something important. If you ever played Dead Space, you understood how, how really, if you played any survival horror game, you understood the importance of lighting. And I know lighting is one of those things that developers say is extremely difficult to get right. And how there is like the one scene where Jacob Lee, he's walking down some corridor and you just see the shadow of one of the biophages up on the wall and he's just like, oh my fucking god, and rightfully so because you're wanting to avoid all this shit, you're just like, dude, I don't need this, please, please let me live. And you get to see not just that, but numerous different areas, like everything didn't look exactly the same. Some of it had warm lighting, some of it had cold lighting, and it was all different colored, all different unique looking areas. I dig that a lot. And the environmental kills, suddenly I just, I felt very at home as if I was playing Mortal Kombat or some shit and I was just like going for one of those kind of fatalities. But seeing the level of detail that they put into this. Not only could you go and use your little gravity gun to pick up one of the enemies and chuck them into some shit and just watch them get grinded into nothing, but paste. But it can happen to you as well. I mean, he had his gun out and he, numerous different times, Jacob was getting backed into a corner on the one uh, video for the gameplay. And this is how they ended up ending that trailer for it. But he gets pushed into this corner and there's these large mechanical gears and he gets hit into them suddenly his arm goes into it and they pan the camera right to his face and you get to see the look of sheer horror just painted right across it this expression of despair i mean he's so frantic he's desperate to try to survive and to get out of there and you can see it all for naught and all of a sudden it just crushes flesh, bone, everything, and just to a pulp goes everywhere. They were not fucking around with these kills. And that was one of the things I loved about Dead Space 2. They went out of their way with this campaign that I thought, holy shit, that it's hilarious. All the moms who did not like Dead Space 2. And they used this to their advantage, where they were just like, these parents, they didn't want to have any part of this. And they're just like, nope, 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 can't fuck all this. And I love that. And this is just going and continuing that tradition of really fucked up monster designs, which I still say that Dead Space is way up there with awesome as fuck, scary as shit monster designs. And this looks like it's con continuing that. I mean, again, going back to the dismemberment, I mean, Ethan Winter's dismembering simulator aside, it's cool as shit to go and see. You're popping the legs off the enemies, all of a sudden they're frantically clawing and scratching and crawling towards you, trying to get a hold of you, just because their bloodlust is that insatiable and they want to get a hold of you, they want to kill you. Like, it's just, that's all that's on their mind. They only are fixated on death. That's it. Death, murder, everything and anything in between. Some of the monster designs I got to see, there is that one that ripped itself off of that really big thing of rock, and it has like all these tentacles coming out of its face and eyes and shit, and it's just, it's horrific. And you get to see Jacob Lee, he's, he's hanging upside down. The dude's defenseless, absolutely fucked. And this thing is right there up in his face. And it's just like, if you got to see that, all of a sudden you got piss just drizzling down <laughs> all over your chest. And you're just like, oh dear God, if this is the way that I'm going to go out, this sucks. This sucks, buckets of fuck. Please just, I, I need, I need to get out of here. But then I got to see something. I loved it. And it, it made me so happy. It was not only were we going to see a gravity gun and a plasma cutter type weapons, and we got to see different styles of melee attacks, but the stomp, 
was back. I loved Isaac Clark's stomp. So they decided that they were going to go pass the baton on to Lee and he would, I just want to crank up Thugnificent's tune, stomp him in the nuts. I'm just like, yes, yes, do this shit all day. Watch the Boondocks, by the way. Fucking incredible. Read the comics, too. They're really good. Anyhow, but this shit, dude, he was just going to town on some of these enemies. As soon as they were felled, all of a sudden, just ruining their day over and over again and putting in the work. I was just like, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I love that shit. I do. There, there was uh, oh, that one scene where he's, like, sliding across this wall like this and one of the biophages is just like plastered up against that shit. And then all of a sudden it's eyes open right as he's passing by. And I was just like, no, 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 sorry. No, but we gotta, we gotta tap out. Nope, let's, we're good on this shit. It's just, that, that's the kind of shit that I love. It, it's terrible. Like they wanted something that was going to be frightening. They were talking about 3D audio and I'm just like, yes. The importance of audio in horror should never be understated. It seems like common sense to some people, but it's one of those things, if you started taking away some of it, you'd understand that not just like the ambient sound from the music, but just the environment and all the shit around you, how important that is. How it plays a pivotal role in keeping the tension really high, making you worried about what's around every corner. Shit just suddenly, like, a grate just gets ripped open and some shit drops down right in front of you, and all of a sudden you're dealing with more biophages than you can fucking count, and they're coming out of every single crevice, every single crawl space, every single doorway, every single anything, and they are all coming for you. You're the only thing, you're the meal ticket, and for them to just get their fucking jollies off and they want to work a number on you and you're just like, nope, can't, can't have this shit. I can't have this at all. I gotta kill you. Pop, 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 pop. And I did. I loved seeing some of this. He had this one weapon. It looked like it was like a mach an electric machete or some shit. And he's just carving through enemies. Like... He was splitting some of their heads in half. Other ones he was hitting at, like with a melee attack that was just s scattered, uh, scattered brains, scattered remains, just popping the head off like it was nothing, and just chunks go. I was just like, yes to that. He even had like this little dodge mechanic. We're not talking like like a souls like roll and shit like that, but it was getting like a boxer just dodging and and weaving and shit. And I was just like, dude, this this shit right here. I love it in the enemy variety that they showed off. Well, in the gameplay, they didn't show a ton. They only showed like two different types of enemies for you to deal with. But within the reveal trailer, dude, there was all sorts of ones. There was like these little tentacle-like creatures. There was enemies that shot acid or some kind of disgusting ass bile at you. There's the one that, oh shit, this big hulking mean motherfucker that's got these big ass teeth. Take this huge chunk right out of his skull, like his whole fucking face is just gone. And that's how they went and ended that shit. And they're just like, oh, here's the name of the game. I was like, dude, December cannot come enough. Like, uh, it can cannot come enough, cannot come soon enough. I mean, in, in space, no one can hear you scream, but they can hear you cream because I sure as fuck did. Dude, this, this, give me this shit all day for, I'm, I'm so fucking happy to go and see that we're getting, again, the remake, but we're getting the spiritual successor. This is straight up Dead Space 4. We won't have electronic arts looming overhead, trying to go and control all the flow, the way that the game should be. None of those fucking shenanigans. I'm thankful for that. But this, dude, this looks fucking incredible. Like it does. Third person survival horror set in space. And we get to go outside the prison walls and you get to see everything fucking frozen. All of a sudden, I'm just like, Ah, <sighs> I feel, I feel right at home with all this. This is great. I, I'm safe, except for everything's dead. Everything out here is fucking frozen. Numerous different suits, different weapons. We're picking up credits. How are we going to be upgrading our weapons this time around? It just, dude, there's so many things that keep on coming to mind. I've got so many different questions. And that's exciting because that means you're invested. You give a shit and you're just like, dude, I need that. I need that shit all fucking day. I cannot wait to go and see more. Please, by all means, sound off. I, again, YouTube, please like the video. Please ring the bell. Shit, this is my second video back. Please, 
Uh, I don't know. Uh, share the video. Talk about it. Uh, the game does deserve to be talked about. Even if you don't want to go and, and mention me or anything, I don't give a fuck about that. This game does deserve to be making the rounds. I know Resident Evil 4 Remake is going to be, like, at the forefront of our minds, but this shit deserves it. Dude, those, those enemy designs, the gore, bring on the gore, just entire floors full of blood just yes 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 i need that and i do i i love me a good sci-fi game and that's that's what this is going to be giving us so sound off in the comments on all this shit and i didn't get to end the video like i did last time so as always nerds nerdettes and gamers game the fuck on